You know, I often think Malaysia has, well, for far too long been its own biggest hurdle, especially when it comes to harnessing our most powerful asset, which is our people. Mm -hmm. We talk endlessly about brain drain, right? But what if the real problem isn't just people leaving? What if it's more like a... Uh, a policy paralysis that historically made it incredibly tough for our best and brightest to really succeed here at home. That's a really interesting way to put it, policy paralysis. Yeah, because honestly, it can be so disheartening. You see these brilliant Malaysians doing amazing things in other countries, and you know, you just know they could have done the same, maybe even more right here, if only the environment was you know, more supportive. Feels like a huge missed opportunity, one that affects everyone, really. Exactly. But here's the thing, what if what if something genuinely significant is shifting right now? Maybe spearheaded by, well, a pretty unlikely alliance, actually challenging those old ideas about bringing talent back. An unlikely alliance. Right. Go on. Could this signal a real lasting change in how our political landscape approaches national development? They're you know, finally defying those past trends. I mean, what do you believe has genuinely held us back from being a global innovation leader? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the story of Pua Kain Seng, well, it offers some really fascinating and sometimes, frankly, frustrating insights into exactly that. Pua Kain Seng, the tech innovator. The very one. Originally from uh, Second Chan, a pretty quiet town, he achieved global recognition, what, two decades ago now? For the USB controller chip, right? Precisely. He invented the world's first USB flash drive controller chip. Now, you have to think of that chip as like the brain inside every single thumb drive, every memory stick you ever used. Wow. Yeah. It was a single innovation that just profoundly revolutionized how we store and share digital info worldwide. His company, Fisin, that's J in Chinese, it now holds this incredibly dominant position. We're talking over 45% of the global USB flash drive market. 45%? That's huge. It is. But here's the kicker, right? Despite all that global success, despite his deep roots here, Pu actually tried to set up Malaysia as a global microchip design hub way back in 1999. 1999, so quite a while ago. Yeah, long before Fison became the giant it is now. Mm. But his vision, unfortunately, it wasn't lack of talent or money that stopped him. It was uh, pervasive bureaucratic hurdles. Restrictive government policies under the National Front, the Burza National Coalition, which was in power for so long then. Ah, the old roadblocks. Exactly. And that frustrating experience, well, it basically led him to take his ambitions to Taiwan. That's where his ingenuity found the support, the fertile ground it needed to really flourish. Yeah. It just starkly highlights how historical policies, or maybe the rigid way they were applied, can shape a nation's path and lead to missing out on incredible opportunities. And that's exactly where this story takes such a fascinating, unexpected turn now. Because if we fast forward to today, we see Neural Issa stepping into the picture. Right, a very prominent political figure. And someone whose public perception, it seems, has shifted more positively recently, especially after some, let's say, intense political periods. She met Pua Kain Seng about two years ago. Oh, okay. And what came out of that first conversation was, well, pretty profound. Despite his huge international success, the fact he could invest anywhere, Pua apparently expressed this really deep, almost emotional desire to contribute back to Malaysia. After everything that happened in 99. Seems so. He made it incredibly clear. Yes, other countries are options, but his heart was still set on Malaysia. Driven by this, uh, this fervent hope, you could say, to turn Malaysia into Southeast Asia's digital and tech hub. That's quite a commitment. And it wasn't just talk. He laid out a concrete, ambitious plan, bringing in RM1 billion in direct investment. One billion ringgit. Yes, and facilitating a technology transfer valued at an incredible RM10 billion, all aimed squarely at boosting Malaysia's microchip sector significantly. It's just an amazing testament to his connection, his loyalty, even after finding success elsewhere. Okay, so what made this time different? Why did this initiative gain traction when the 1999 one failed? Understanding that means digging into those specific political and bureaucratic challenges he faced before. And how... I'm very candid with her. He shared this struggle, one that I think resonates with many Malaysians abroad. He said something like, and this is a direct quote apparently, I can solve complex problems, but I still cannot understand Malaysia's political mentality and landscape. Wow. 
That says a lot. It, it really does. It's not just about red tape, is it? It speaks volumes about the uh, the systemic issues, the lack of transparency, maybe even underlying biases that can deter top talent and big investments. So that admission was the catalyst. It seemed to compel Neural Iza to take real concrete action. She didn't just offer sympathy. She actively became this crucial intermediary. She started meticulously navigating that very political maze Pua found so baffling. How did she do that? Well, she proactively connected him with key players right across the political spectrum within various government departments, notably the Selangor Information Technology and Digital Economy Corporation. Ah, oh, SIDEC. That's Ali Pulandai. That's on yes. Chinese, right? Correct, SIDEC. And her ultimate goal, her big ambition, was crystal clear. Transform Selangor into Malaysia's Silicon Valley. It signals this concerted, top-down effort to really push tech growth and maybe more importantly, to systematically dismantle the kinds of obstacles Pua ran into decades ago. It feels like a direct challenge to the old way of doing things. And the results. We're actually seeing them now, aren't we? It's quite incredible. Just, what, two months ago? That's right. Pua Kain Seng officially launched M Storage right here in Malaysia. And this isn't just any tech company setting up shop. It's focused on cutting edge microchip design, high-end data storage solutions. We're talking foundational, world-class tech. Bring it right to our doorstep. Exactly. So this whole initiative, it feels like a massive double win. First, you attract this top-tier tech company with all the innovation and infrastructure that comes with it. Second, you bring back a visionary leader who's genuinely committed to nurturing local Malaysian engineering talent. And that commitment seems real, especially looking at the salaries. Oh, absolutely. To tackle brain drain head-on, M Storage isn't just offering jobs. They're offering highly competitive pay. They're setting a whole new benchmark. Fresh graduates starting at RM6000. 6,000 ringgits straight out of university. That's significant. It really is. Way above many typical entry-level roles. And experienced engineers, they could potentially earn five-figure salaries. That move alone just raises the bar massively for tech employment here. It makes staying or coming back genuinely attractive for our talent. And he plans to list the company too. Yeah, ambitious plans to list M Storage on the stock market by 2028. And apparently, he personally thanked Nurul Iza, acknowledging her crucial guidance, her persistence in making this happen, making this long-held dream a reality. You know, this whole thing goes way beyond just economics, doesn't it? It has really profound implications for Malaysia's, well, our political and social fabric. It directly challenges some long-standing policies and assumptions. How so? Well, think about it. This initiative successfully brings back and supports a major Malaysian Chinese talent. So it directly pushes against, or at least offers a counter-narrative to, the traditional perceptions around policies, like the Bumatiro policy. Right, the affirmative action framework. Exactly. For listeners who might not know, the Bumatiro policy aims to uplift Malays and indigenous communities in areas like education, jobs, business. It's been around a long time, but it's often criticized fairly or unfairly, for impacting meritocracy and maybe contributing to talent leaving. Okay. But this case, Pua's return, it showcases how a more inclusive approach, one based on merit, on capability, can lead to these incredible breakthroughs for the whole nation. And the public reaction reflects that. Remarkably so. What's striking is the positive sentiment seems to cut across racial lines. Even Malay netizens, from what's reported, have been widely praising Neural Iza's efforts. There seems to be an understanding that economic growth, good jobs, it benefits all Malaysians, regardless of ethnicity. That's a really positive sign. It is. It sets a powerful new benchmark for that Malaysian, Malaysia ideal. You know, the idea that merit and capability, not race, should primarily determine who contributes to the nation's progress. It really highlights a potentially significant evolving shift in politics where leaders like Nurul Iza seem willing to look beyond traditional lines to bring in genuine talent and investment for the greater good. It's truly fascinating how the single success story now it kind of reframes Nurul Iza's own political standing too. Remember her appointment as an advisor to SI deck? Yes, there was quite a bit of noise about that initially. Exactly. A lot of skepticism, even accusations of nepotism, you know, given her family's political history. But now... This tangible achievement, a global tech visionary returning, high-value jobs being created, it seems undeniably justify that role, doesn't yeah, it? It certainly provides strong evidence for the value she brought in this instance. Right. 
And this success, well, it could potentially pave the way for her to gradually chip away at that negative image, sometimes linked to dynastic politics, by showing real impact, real competence. The monstrable results speak volumes. They do. And the story itself, Pua returning from a small town like Second Gen, it's more than just a business deal. It feels like a powerful story of hope. It signals Malaysia's potential to maybe shift from just being a user of technology to actually becoming an active creator and innovator for the future. Creating a positive feedback loop. Exactly. This virtuous cycle. High paying jobs, compelling opportunities, draw talented people like Pua back home. That in turn fosters national development and maybe, just maybe, starts reversing the brain drain into actual brain gain. A significant shift indeed if it can be sustained and replicated. So it really makes you think, doesn't it? If the successful return of just one visionary, driven by political will, by genuine effort to clear those old hurdles, mm. if that can spark such profound economic and social change. What other potential is out there? Exactly. What other untapped potential sits within our huge diaspora? How many other brilliant Malaysians are just waiting for the right conditions, the right signal to come home and contribute? It's a compelling question. And what does this one success story really tell us about the future? About talent, meritocracy, national development here in Malaysia, it leaves you with a lot to chew on, right? <laughs> could this moment, this breakthrough with Pua Kain Singh, could it be the definitive start of a new chapter where talent truly knows no boundaries in Malaysia and it fundamentally reshapes our future?